Hello and welcome back everyone. Joe here and I'm super excited to announce this collaboration with Magical Girl Kit Kat. We have been working our butts off for a while now to get this collab done and it has been an honor and a blast to work with Kat. Honestly, she's a sweetheart and it has been honestly one of the best things ever to bond with her over smart dolls, sewing, content creation, honestly everything in between. She, She's a sweetheart and I love her and it has been a total blast. Not only that, but she offered to send me a custom smart doll face up that she did herself of my character, Bulma. So, thank you, Kat. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, this means the world. It's one of the nicest things anyone has done for me in a while. So, thank you. We're going to be opening this on cam, so I know. I'm just as excited to see it. So, I'm pretty sure she'll be showing the process in her channel. So, please, please, please. Not only that, she's also doing two characters, not one. And they're going to be gender bent. So, please, please, guys. Go to her channel, check her out. All of the info will be down below in my description. So links and everything, show her love. Show her love. Leave her a like, a comment, and subscribe. Please, guys. It's so worth it. She's amazing, and you're going to fall in love with her. She's the best. Okay, so that aside, let's jump right in. And once again, thank you, Kat. You're the best. I love you, girl. All right, let's jump in. So the first thing I worked on in this collaboration were these eyes. I honestly didn't record the entire process of me actually designing them digitally and printing them and all that since I kind of wasn't going to make myself any. Of these were all for Kat at first and then, I was, and then I thought, why not? Might as well make some for Bulma. So I threw in like four, like two pairs just to test out different sizes and they're the ones I'm cutting right now on cam. And the rest were just for Kat, a few different styles just for her to try out. So I'm basically doing the same process I've done in my previous eye making video where they're follow me eyes where I print them, laminate, add a little jab of resin, UV resin to be exact, and then just blasting them with some UV light just to set them and they're all set and done. Now, let's see how they look. Besides the eyes, I also wanted to send Kat a little HTV print that she could iron onto her shirt with one of the characters that she's actually working on. I won't give away too much, but this is a little hint. And it is time for Bulma's tea. <laughs> okay, now for the t-shirt, I wasn't sure if I was going to have to draft the pattern or if I was going to be able to use my original oversized tea pattern that I have provided for you guys before in another video DIY, but I ended up realizing that it was a little too small for the type of style of t-shirt that Bulma wears, which is a little oversized and more suited to be worn like a shirt dress type of thing, where the shorts or anything under doesn't really show since it's that long. So all I did was kind of extend the sleeves and the hem of the shirt, and basically it's the same thing at about like an inch and a half, and you sew it the same way you sew the other shirt. And once you cut your pieces out, all you need to do is some magic and boom, it's done. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I sew this up. To start off, I'm going to go ahead and attach the neckband since I like doing it before sewing the side seam so it's open and perfectly easy to get in there and sew it down. Start off by pinning the center back and matching up to the front and stretching a little bit as you go and stitch. That way, the neckband kind of becomes the size of the actual neck hole since, like I said before, it runs a little smaller in order to bring everything in a little bit and kind of pucker it up. After adding the collar band, I went ahead and surged it and surged the hem of the sleeves, which are the next part I'm going to go ahead and sew.
If you're wondering why I don't hem the sleeves before sewing the side seams, it's because I kind of don't like how a seam allowance can peek through when you do that. Um, I'd rather have them look like a little more natural and how they normally are on human clothes. So I like to wait whenever I can to sew it after, so it kind of gives it a cleaner look in my opinion. So once I sew and serge the side seams, I can go ahead and start serging the hem of the shirt and prepare to sew it down. I honestly don't have a measurement for the hem of the shirt, I'm just honestly eyeballing it. Same thing with the sleeves, I try to match it as best as I can, but I don't really have a measurement. If you're trying to go for one, it's kind of like a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter. So I did end up making two different shirts. This is the process for the second one. Um, after adding the collar, I believe, I wanted to have options and have two different sizes to kind of compare and see which one fits best. One of them is the original pattern. I believe the one that I'm sewing right now is the larger one. For the HTV or heat transfer vinyl that I'll be using for the shirt, I didn't have like a perfect white that was just like white. I only had like these little iridescent ones. I'm not complaining. I absolutely love them. But I also didn't have like a perfect black or like a black, you know, like black. Like I didn't have any of it. So I ended up going with like the darkest color I had, which was this bluer, like cooler purple and then like, like a warmer one. I ended up going with the warmer one. It kind of reflects one of the hues or the color tones that the pink shirt has. So I kind of like how it makes it look. So for the cut files, designing them was honestly super simple. All I did was kind of type out the name Bulma and then did like another little outline of it as she has on her shirt. I mildly edited the font of, that I used and then transferred it over to the canvas workspace and flipped it over so it could be backwards. That way when we print it on, it's actually readable and not backwards, which is kind of like, it's hard to explain, but if you know, you know. <laughs> So after transferring the files to my machine, all I need to do is cut out the pieces that I need, stick them onto the mat, and we're good to go. So after weeding the pieces, I go ahead and layer them just quickly to see how it's going to look and I absolutely love how it turned out. With the pieces all cut out and ready to iron on, I'm going to go ahead and do just that.
Okay, and this is the most satisfying part for me. <laughs> And bam, it's all set. I'm really happy with the results. Let me know in the comments below what you think or if you do something differently. I'm really interested to know. Now for the scarf and socks, I will be using the same material, which is this really elastic knit that I have. It's honestly really difficult to sew with my regular machine, so it's only going to be searched. And I'm currently working on the scarf pattern. All I really did was kind of measure the circumference of the neck and then just from the neck down, just to kind of see how long the scarf was going to be in general. And once I cut it out, it's all set to go ahead and trace out your piece to sew. And if you're wondering why the pattern is a diamond shape, it's because it's going to be folded onto itself and then sewn that way. So while sewing, I made sure to leave two openings at each end of the scarf. That way I can flip it over once I'm done sewing it. So I really wanted this to be a scarf that gets put on and taken off easily and quickly. I didn't want to have to remove my head or have to tie it either. So I ended up going for the next best option and that was magnets. I ended up using this all adhesive type of glue that's like E6000 but I'm a dollar store. Girls balling on a budget. And all I do was kind of put some glue into the raw ends of the scarf and then I went ahead and put on some magnets on each end. After letting it cure for a few hours, I came back, tested it, made sure it was working right, and then I tried it out on my dress form, and it looks a little something like this. For the socks, I decided to alter my sock pattern that I did provide for you guys a few weeks back. And all I really did was kind of trace it out and I kind of shortened it a little bit and fanned it out. So in order to maintain the proper fit of the sock on the foot, all I did was kind of fan it out from the ankle up. And then I shortened it a little bit, like I said before, and I will not be hemming the edges of these socks, just sewing them down, since I'm going to be folding over the excess into itself and then letting it fall nicely on its own. So I did kind of realize that they were a little too long so I went ahead and cut a little bit and then tried them on again and I really did like how they fit and like I mentioned I fold the raw edges into themselves and that way it creates like a nice little fold that kind of hangs on its own. time to make Bulma's wig. Alright, so I'm a little nervous to show you guys this whole process since it is the first time that I've done a wig like this and this technique is very new to me and I had not tried it before so <laughs> go easy on me y'all, please. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start off by making the wig cap off cam and then come back once it's done. So to kick off the wig, I went ahead and sewed one row right above the casing for the elastic and sewed all around. Then for the second one, I did it about a centimeter or half an inch apart from that one or a little bit less than that. And once I sewed them on, they were able to flip up like this and I left a little bald spot at the top which is totally covered by the rest of the hair. And at this point, this is where my idea hit me. 
So the idea was to sew one row on the inside of the wig. So I had to flip it over, wrong sides out, sew that whole row right next to the casing, then flip the wig right sides out once again. And from there, the whole task was to kind of get the hair that was coming from the inside of the wig to kind of flip over and kind of fall nicely and then join the rest of the ponytail, kind of in the process of making a wig that's just a single ponytail, no bangs, no nothing. However, I encountered a big issue. There was, the wefts were kind of causing the wig to kind of slip off and they were kind of affecting the tension that helped the wig stay on. So I made the executive decision to remove it and find another way to make this wig happen. <laughs> After removing the row that was sewn on the inside of the wig, I decided to sew on another weft directly on top of the first weft that I sewed. While this new row does serve the same purpose as the previous one I sewed inside of the wig, the execution is going to be a little different and it's going to change the appearance of the wig I was going for. So after sewing that one row, this is how it looks and I'm, I was really tempted to leave it like a half up, half down wig. I really like this look, but we're doing a Boma wig today. In the end, I decided to turn this layer into a set of bangs to cover up any of the wig cap that's trying to peek through. And now that the bangs are done, it is time to braid the hair. Now, I did have some trouble braiding the hair since it kind of kept plopping off, I guess, from the tension or me pulling it. So I did need some help to kind of hold it in place while I did that. So I was mostly worried about this little seam in between the bangs and the rest of the hair that kind of just shows the weft. So I got my color pencils and kind of chose the best tones that kind of resembled the wefts I was using. Went in there with all the different color pencils and honestly it kind of blends in very well and it looks a lot better than I thought it would. I believe I have used this method before for my wig DIY where it parts down the middle. It's a pink wig I believe. And of course, I had to redo the braid since I kind of messed it up while working on it with the color pencils. <laughs> it's all right, guys. Let's go ahead and get started. First off, I just want to show this cute little note right here. It says, cats are like potato chips. You can't just have one. So true. All right, so... I didn't open this. I'm very Her. I'm like, I don't even know what camera you show her on. On the one I'm showing up above or the one over here. But let's do both. You guys. Wow. Cat. You did yourself. The lashes. I have no idea how these sub artists do this. It's amazing work. Like the fine lines, the detailing, the highlights, the blushing. Wow. 
Oh my gosh. You guys. I really hope she shows the process. I'm pretty sure she did. She will. Pretty sure she mentioned something like that. But wow. This is going to be very fun to watch. I'm really looking forward to seeing the whole process. I love it, Kat. Thank you so much. You're amazing. This is amazing. Thank you. I can't wait to put her on her body, but I still have a few more things I need to get done before we get there, so let's jump in. Wow. Look at you guys. One last shot. And thank you, Kat. You're the best. I love her. The first accessory we'll be working on is Bulma's belt. So I ended up cutting up one of those little thin wire-like bracelets and kind of looping around to build the frame of the buckle. None of the other wires I had were thick enough, I believe, so I ended up going with this option. And once I wrapped it around, all I did was kind of break it off and try to align the ends together. I've never done this before, so I kind of don't feel too comfortable giving directions or, you know, step-by-steps on how to make this. And this is how the frame looks once it's done, and then it's time to work on the prong. If you're wondering what that is, it's a little part that goes into the belt holes. For the prong, I just had to make sure that the little round part at the end that's supposed to go around the buckle frame just needed to be wide enough for it to fit. So I did sadly have to pull apart the buckle frame one last time in order to put the prong inside, but this is how it looks once it's done, and I'm super impressed and really happy with the outcome. Right, and at this point, with the belt buckle done, I can go ahead and start cutting out the belt. I ended up making it a little bit smaller than half an inch. Right here, it's half an inch, but I ended up altering it a little bit and making it a little bit thinner. So I ended up making it about three quarters of an inch, which is a little bit under a centimeter. And of course, after cutting out my first piece, I realized that the edge wasn't squared off, so I had to cut out even more and then make sure that they were nice and even. So in order to make the belt fit around the buckle, I needed to punch a hole in order for the prong to go through in order to give it the movement it needs to make it functional. Then in order to keep that fold in place, I was trying to use a snap, but I sadly didn't have any ones that were small enough to fit, so I opted for a grommet, which worked perfectly fine, and honestly, I really like how it looks. And this is the moment I realized that I cut the belt way too short, so I have to start everything all over again, starting from cutting out the belt. And luckily this was a much better fit. And while the belt is on, I take the moment to mark where the holes are gonna go and then use that as a reference to mark the rest. And to finish them off, I wanted to look a little neater so I added grommets around each hole. And with the grommets added, this is how the belt looks, and it's missing one more touch. Can you guess what it is? If you guess the belt loop, then you are correct. So for the belt loop, all I did was grab one of those original pieces I cut out, wrapped it all around, made sure it was the right width and length to cut out any excess, and from there I tested out this leather glue I had, but obviously didn't work. It was for real leather, this is actual faux leather. So I ended up using my all adhesive glue from the dollar store that always has my back and works perfectly fine. After letting the glue cure for a little bit, this is how the belt looks. It's all set and all done, and I'm honestly really impressed with the outcome.
And the next accessory I'll be tackling is Bulma's little bag or pouch that she has. Um, I really wanted to simplify it, so I cut out two rectangular pieces in two different colors. The lighter one will be the bigger part of the bag, and then that little darker fabric that I'm going to cut a little, a little bit of is going to be that little button that's in the center of the little pouch. So the plan for the bigger bag is to sew it up, flip it right sides out, and once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and fold it onto itself to see how the pouch is going to look. And sadly, this piece was a little too small, so I went ahead and cut out two pieces of each color once again in order to make the bag all over again, but this time a little bit bigger. So this little piece ended up looking really good, but somewhere along the line, it kind of just started falling apart and fraying, so the seam fell apart. So that's why I ended up cutting two other pieces, like I said, and working on those. All right, so I cut out two bigger pieces and I went ahead and sewed them. I did leave a little opening on one end so I could flip it out and not only that, but insert a magnet which is going to make this little pouch functional. So once I flip it right sides over, I'm going to go ahead and stitch about half a centimeter or a quarter of an inch away from the edge that has the opening. That way I can be able to put a magnet inside and then seal it up by hand. So to make this little rectangle into a little pouch, I folded it to where I wanted it to be and then once I did that, I tacked it down at the ends and then blind stitched the side seams. And once I'm done sewing that, this is how it looks. And then it's time to sew on the little dark blue piece, which is basically sewn the same way, blind stitching all around and then tacking it down at the edge of the bag. And once I'm done attaching that little dark blue piece, this is how it looks. And if you're wondering why the magnet is on the outside, that's an extra one that's attached to the one inside. And I'm just using it just to keep it there. And also just to know which side is the side that's going to get glued on. Talking about gluing it on, let's go ahead and mark the magnet. So all I did was tap my little pen onto the magnet. That way it can release some ink. Then I folded that little flap over it. And then it just leaves a perfectly positioned mark exactly where I need the magnet to go. So my first attempt at gluing it, I put some glue on the magnet and then folded over the little flap and clipped it in place. At first I thought it was going to work but then I kind of thought about it and kind of had a feeling it wouldn't so I checked on it and I was right. The glue had absorbed into the fabric. So I went back in there, I opened it up, removed the magnet from being attached to the one inside the bag and then added another pop of glue where the absorbed glue is hoping it would just kind of rest in there and stop absorbing it. Luckily that worked out. Placed the magnet on there, it stayed and let it cure. And the final accessory we'll be working on is Bulma's little bow that she has on top of her braid. So all I did, I kind of winged it honestly. I cut out a bunch of rectangular pieces according to what each piece was going to be. Biggest one was the big bow. The second biggest one was the two little straps that hang off the bow. The second biggest one was the little piece that holds the bow and the little straps together. And the smallest piece was the one that holds all of that and attaches around the braid. If I'm being honest, I completely forgot to click record at this point, but all I did was sew a tube out of the little rectangular piece I cut, flip it right sides out, and then sew the ends together, and I'm sealing it up with a blind stitch. And from there, I go ahead and sew all of the rectangular pieces, leaving one little opening on each one to flip them over. Then I go in for a mandatory little press with my iron and I test out the ribbon to see how it looks. I end up realizing that I don't like the size of the actual bow piece so I go out and cut out another one, sew it up and I'm back again to iron it and we're all set to build the bow.
So to put the bow together, I went ahead and did a few running stitches through it so I could be able to gather it and make it easier for that little bit in the middle to hold it together. Once I did that, I clipped the thread, went ahead and got the little piece for the middle, added a few stitches at the back, then I ran through the smallest piece that's gonna go around the braid and I did a hook and eye to the ends so I could hold in place. And it looks like this. This is also the moment where I realized that the little pouch stuck to the little grommets on the belt. So I did a little happy dance because I didn't have to make a little loop for it to go around the belt. So <laughs> saving me a lot of time. Now that every single piece of Olma's outfit is all done, let's go ahead and take a look at it before we try it on. I'll be starting off with the eyes since these take the longest and I was right, these took me forever. I think as the cabochons are a little heavier than actual plastic eyes, so it gave me a little trouble. <laughs> Thankfully, those Dollar Tree fondant tools came in clutch. Hold a second. Before you go, make sure to check out Magical Girl Kit Kat's channel to see the other half of this collaboration. She did an amazing job turning not only one, but two smart dolls into characters from Dragon Ball Z. I won't spoil who they are, so go and check her out. All of her info is linked below in the description. Subscribe and show her some love. She's amazing and you won't regret it. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I truly appreciate your support. See you next time.